Okay, good evening and welcome to this remote meeting of Wirral Planning Committee. My name is Stuart Kelly and I'm the chair of the committee. This meeting will be webcast and record retained on the council website. For those people at home who are viewing the webcast, if you look above the meeting, you will see a resources tab. Select this and the link to the agenda will appear on the right hand side. This will then enable you to open the agenda reports as PDF documents and follow the discussion. My role is to ensure that the committee runs smoothly, having regards to procedure, behaviour and ethics. To explain who are with us online. Planning officers, a highway engineer and an environmental health officer. They will present the applications and provide any technical advice that may be uh, required. The council solicitor. She will give advice to the committee on procedural and legal matters that may arise. There is also the minute taker and, of course, IT support. The elected members will consider the applications and collectively make the decisions. Voting will be by roll call. Each application will be introduced by the planning officers. Where there is a qualifying petition of 25 signatures or more, I'll invite a representative of the petitioners to address the committee for five minutes. I will then invite the applicant or their agent to address the committee for five minutes. Statutory and local consultees may also address the committee. A ward councillor can also address the committee. Once representations have been made, and following any questions of clarification from the committee, the speaker may not participate in any debate that follows within the committee. The application will then be open to debate and discussion by members of the planning committee, and we will then make a decision on the application. When making decisions, members may only have regard to material planning considerations. It's a matter for each member individually to balance these considerations and to decide what weight to give them. Members will also have regard to local planning policies and to the national planning policy framework and guidance. Members of the committee must not predetermine any matter which comes to the committee for decision. However, it is permissible for committee members to be predisposed towards a particular outcome with regards to an application, provided they don't make up their minds on how to vote before formally considering the application details, listening to the presentations and the full debate of committee. Members must have listened to the debate and considered all the facts before deciding whether or not to move any motion. If a member is minded to put a motion to the committee, it's good practice to first seek advice from the planning officer on the wording of a potential motion. A reminder for members, keep your microphone muted and your camera off until called to speak. Ensure that the chat function is accessible to you. Indicate that you want to speak by typing your request into the chat, into the chat function. Turn on your camera and microphone prior to speaking. Turn them off again when you've finished. When a vote is to be taken, the solicitor will call your name. We now need to just check all members are present and their equipment is working correctly. When I call your name, could you turn on your camera and then your microphone and confirm, please? So we'll start. Bruce Berry. Bruce? Yes, present and correct. Thanks. Andy Corkill. Yes, here, present and correct. Uh, George Davis. Here, Sue, present and correct. Steve Fawkes. Uh, here, Stuart, yeah, thank you. And Samantha <coughs> Fox. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Steve <coughs> Hayes. Hi, Chair, present and correct. And Cathy Hodgson. Yes, Chair, I'm here, present and correct. Mary <coughs> Jordan. Yes, here, present and correct. And Brian Kelly. Thank you, Chair. Yes, presence and all equipment's okay. Thank you. Okay. Ian Lewis. Yes, uh, Chair, I'm here, present, and I can hear. Uh, Paul Stewart. Uh, yes, good evening, Chair. Uh, uh, Stuart Whittingham. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Here, present, and correct. Thanks, Stuart. And Irene Williams. Yes, I'm here. Yes. Thanks, Amy. Okay, so we shall uh, get to the agenda.
Uh, from to us, first item is to approve the accuracy of the minutes of the meeting held on Tuesday, 23rd of June, 2020. Okay, nobody wishing to speak on that, so we can take them as being um, approved. Uh, agenda item two, the Members' Code of Conduct, Declarations of Interest. Members of the committee are asked whether they have any personal or prejudicial interests in connection with the application on the agenda, and if so, to declare them and state the nature of the interest. No members, no declarations of interest. Excellent. Uh, agenda item three, then, is application of Grover Course, Grosvenor Road, Hoylake, and I'll ask the plan officer to introduce the report, please. This is the planner. The plan's up, thanks. Yeah, okay. So, um, planning permission is sought for an additional storey to this existing two-storey apartment block. Um, it's block B, which is uh, shown in red um, on the, the plan on the screen, uh, and block A, which I'll refer to, is is just uh, south southwest of that, that block. So Block B presently houses eight apartments, and the proposed development would add a further three apartments across the new second floor, resulting in 11 apartments in total within this block. So these, these are the front elevations um, onto, onto Grosvenor Road. Uh, the, the top one is the existing and the, the bottom is as proposed. So block A consists of 10 apartments and that block sits some 25 metres southwest of block B. An application for five additional apartments to block A by adding a second floor in a similar arrangement to the proposals being considered by committee this evening for block B was refused in August 2017 but was subsequently allowed on appeal in January 2018. The proposals have been amended since they were first submitted. Originally, four additional apartments were proposed, but the southwesternmost unit, immediately opposite Five Cable Road, has been deleted from the scheme, and this part of the, de of the development will remain as two-storey. Um, so that's this part of the site here. As you can see, it remains two-storey. The changes were made as a result of concerns for a window on the gable end of Five Cable Road, which serves a loft conversion. Block B is located some 25 metres southeast of the side elevation of Three Cable Road. So that is um, here, that's number three. And the additional floor at this point of the apartment block is not considered to impact on any windows on that elevation as the separation distances achieved are 2 metres in excess of the minimum distance of 23 metres required when taking into account the additional floor. Although no additional parking is provided within the proposed development, the site is located within a sustainable location with access to public transport and local amenities. When considering the appeal for Block A, the planning inspector concluded that due to the availability of on- and off-street car parking, the proximity of a public car park and access to public transport, the lack of additional parking would not be harmful. Having regard to the amended design secured, it is considered that the proposal would accord with policy HS4 criteria for new housing and would result in a form of development that relates satisfactorily to the surrounding properties and would not result in a detrimental change in the character of the area. The application is recommended for approval, and there is a qualifying petition of objection in association with this application. Okay, thanks for that. So we're now here from the petitioners. Um, so if Mary, you could turn, Mary Gerard, if you could turn on your camera and microphone. Yes, I'm here. Excellent. You will have five minutes to address the committee, um, and I'll uh, I'll let you know when you have about a minute uh, left uh, to speak. Do I want, do I speak now? You can speak now and put your case. Five minutes. Okay. 
Your guidance to conversions, SPD2, regulations advice, is when a three-story is proposed, the separation distances should be increased by two metres to avoid loss of privacy and daylight requirements. This affects the bedroom at number five Cable Road, which would become uninhabitable. This room is the bedroom of their granddaughter, who has lived with them for 10 years. The staircase window looks into this bedroom and by your own regulations is too close. This plus other rooms also create loss of privacy and light and overlook number five's garden. Guidance SPD2 is not being observed. Number three Cable Road and one Grosvenor Road will also lose privacy. This new story will dwarf their properties, which are some of Hoylake's oldest buildings. Its appearance will be totally out of keeping. Further, the height of the trees in number three and one Grosvenor Road, which are nine metres in height, would have an impact on the light in the living rooms of the new development, which would have no outlook at all. These are evergreen trees which give some privacy to these houses and gardens. Block A should not be compared to Block B. This overlooks the car park and nearest buildings are three-storey buildings in Market Street. Block B are overlooking two-storey houses which would be dominated by this third-storey building, which would be out of place with their houses and the very old Hoylake cottages opposite to this site. Photographs are provided showing the proximity of all the buildings which are applicable. We would very much like the planning committee not to ignore their own guidelines and decline this application as not appropriate in this location and show some thought how this will affect the residents in this area, just for the sake of three extra apartments. Can you tell me why it is not deemed to be too close? It is not a loft conversion. It is actually a bedroom in number five Cable Road. Thank you. Okay, th thanks for that. I'm just going to ask if any members of the committee have any questions uh, of clarification to ask. I'll just ask members if they have anything that you wants to jump in. No? Mary Jo, thank you very much for your uh, presentation. Thank you. Um, thank you. And so we don't have the developer and a, a, um, a representative of the developer to speak to us uh, tonight. Andrew Hemsworth Gardner, are you online? Sorry, right. I'm here, Chair, ready to go if, uh, if you want to invite me in. Okay, Andrew, you may speak to us as the Board Councillor. Okay, uh, thank you, Chair, and good evening, Members, Officers, and um, Mary and the residents of uh, Cable Road there. Um, I think the first thing I'd just like to point out to the committee is that, you know, We've heard from officers about Block A that was refused at committee 2017, but granted on appeal. And if you've been to see the site, you will, I'm sure, agree that it's materially different in its aspect. It does overlook a car park, and then it's about, a, I would say, 100 metres perhaps then to the back of the Market Street properties, which were crucial, I think, in the, um, uh, in the inspector's thoughts of a three-storey, three because they are three-storey with loft conversion at the back of, of, of Market Street. So we're looking at an entirely different prospect here when we look into the um, the street scene element of of this proposal. Um, Mary said that um, this part of Cable Road has some of the oldest um, properties in Hoylake, and she was quite right. I mean, we all deliver our, our wards, and we all have, you know, addressed envelopes, and all the numbers are all over the place. It's it's fascinating. It's, it's that old that none of the numbers make sense. You know, this is a, a really old area. And we do need to preserve some of that. It's not quite within the conservation area, but it's it's not far from there at all. Um, 
conservation area runs out in the old sort of town hall area. Um, crucially, the road width of Grosvenor Road, it is not a two-way carriageway. It is only a one-lane carriageway. So when we're looking at, just for, for members' perspective on it, you know, when we're looking at going up three storeys, those three storeys then face onto a single-lane highway. You can't get two cars past each other on Grosvenor Road. I mean, similarly, when you look down Cable Road, this building will dominate the street scene. The existing building dominates it. So to put another story on top, I think, is um, I mean, it's just really is a, a step too far. I think Mary's covered quite a lot of the, um, the technical uh, planning aspects, but I think specifically, you know, we can talk about distances uh, and such, but SPD2... Um, and the guidance is development should not result in significant loss of privacy, daylight or sunlight for neighbouring properties. That's covered by the measurement. Nor be visually overbearing or dominant when viewed from adjoining property. Um, and I think there's no way that from number three cable, which does have full view of this property and it will be the view, that it will uh, certainly be overbearing and dominant. And... I think in the measurements, once we have the third floor um, adjustments and the two metre um, rule coming in on, on top of the 21, um, we're really in that area and it's so marginal that the um, distances we're talking about and are we really confident for the sake of a, a few millimetres here, a few millimetres there, which could quite easily be within margin of error, that we can pass this on that basis. So. I think there's every reason to um, for the committee to be confident in rejecting this proposal and not to be daunted by the um, inspectors granting of approval on the on block a materially different different street scene different set of rules um, and I think we can look to policy hs4 hs13 and SPD2 to, to guide us to uh, refusal thank you chair Uh, thanks, Andrew. Does any members wish to ask any questions? Clarification of Councillor Gardner. No. Nope. Excellent. Thank, thank you very much. Okay, we'll open it up to the committee then for any questions of officers or for their comments. <laughs> Kathy. Thanks, Chair. Um, following on from um, Councillor Gardner's comments and uh, the, the petitioner, um, I have a concern over um, amenity and specifically paragraph 311.1 of the report, um, which shows that the Council's interface distances between a main elevation and a gable end of an adjacent building should be 14 metres for buildings of a similar height. And I know that these that this block of flats were built before the separation distances came in. But if it was being built now, the 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 closest interface distance um, is um, eight metres and, and, and it, it goes to 10 metres away, which is way short of what we would expect today if we were looking at an application that was being built now. Um, I feel that to add a third story, apart from the fact that it will be um, not particularly nice from a street scene point of view and for the residents of Cable Road and Grosvenor Road, but specifically that the um, the amenity for uh, number five Cable Road especially uh, will be further diminished than it already is. Um, and so I'm not particularly happy with this application. Um, I'll leave, uh, obviously, for a discussion for other people to come in and, and see what else is uh, is discussed with further members of the committee. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thanks, Cathy. Uh, Cathy, Steve Hayes. Yes, uh, yes uh, I had a look at the uh, the developments or the proposed development last week, and uh, I'll be honest, I had to go, sort of go, go backwards and forwards between Block A and Block B just to confirm to myself that there were sort of similar sort of buildings because there's no doubt that when you look at uh, Block A from the car park and you look at the developments and then look at the existing development which is going to be proposed above Block B, um, it certainly does look different because of the narrow road when you look down Cable Road and also obviously as 
Councillor Gardner said there is a short, uh, a small sort of road only allowable to pass one car in Grosvenor Road. So I do have some concerns about the um, visual aspect of the um, new development. So it, I do feel it is material dif- there is a material difference to be considered compared to what exists in Block A. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. And then what from members? Am I just chip in them before we... Stuart, if I could, sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry, yes. Didn't do, yeah. didn't do the right way around. Um, yeah, uh, like um, a couple of other members have mentioned, I went up to the site and uh, I do agree very much with the the ward councillor that it is a strange site indeed. Um, it's a mixture of the retail and um, commercial developments on Market Street backing on to uh, what's very small and old uh, residential areas and we've got the feature of the railway at the back and the railway sidings which have been developed and even in amongst that area <laughs> there are uh, some commercial uses which which break up and then this uh, this open car park so um, I've had a good look at the site um, I think we're going to have to start getting used to applications given the climate emergency uh, where parking provision is not considered uh, to be that important, particularly um, when it's got public transport uh, um, links, particularly, we know, just at the end of the road, Grover Road, there's the Hoy Lake Station. Um, and I, I've, I've waved to and fro on this application. I'm, I'm not overly worried and I don't mean to sound insulted but I'm not overly worried about the the five cable road the the window is extremely small in the gable end of, of that property if, if anyone's been around there and it is a a loft conversion I don't particularly think there'd be any worse uh, impact than there currently is now the impact is already there by the the, the mass and I think Steve Hayes I agree with him it does sort of look rather daunting as you, you look at that narrow, but when you widen the site out, uh, there's lots going on in that site. So my my views are, I think we're going to have to get used to um, applications that intensify use. Uh, part of the local plan talks about greater intent, you know, intensifying not only brownfield sites, but existing sites. So we, we might get, see a lot more of these applications. So really... Uh, I am in the balance on, on this one. I, I can see it being a valuable contribution, albeit very low numbers, to the, the, to the overall housing numbers. Uh, and my measurement is between the impact of those residents who would love to live there, great location, uh, you know, with good transport links, and the, the, the current residents there. So really, it will be very interested here if there are any reasons for refusal. Uh, and defendable. Uh, I would just like um, Matthew to comment on the question from the petitioner: Why are we ignore? Why do we seem to be ignoring certain guidelines? And uh, I think it might need a professional reply to that rather than a councillor reply. Thank you. <clears throat> thanks. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, through you, chair. Um, so as Councillor Hayes has alluded, uh, sorry, Councillor Fawkes has alluded to, the window in the, the gable elevation of number five, um, it relates to the stairwell to the loft conversion of, um, of, of number five uh, with the principal windows for, for that conversion being on the rear elevation. Um, so although that does provide additional light to the, um, the loft conversion, um, in the strictest sense, and in planning terms, it's not a habitable room. So you could consider that as, as being a blank elevation to a blank elevation. Um, notwithstanding that, however, um, the, the case officer negotiated with the, with the, the agents and the applicants to reduce uh, the southwestern part of, of, um, of the scheme um, down uh, to, 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 to two stories. So the... Um, uh, apartment four uh, was deleted from the scheme, so so that window is no worse off really in in in, in the sense that it it still looks out onto uh, the the, the two story part of of the proposal. Um, when you consider um, number three cable road, so the the separation distance at the moment is 25 metres um, from the nearest point of block B 
um, to the end of, of number three. The minimum separation distance, if it was two-storey versus two-storey, would be 21 metres. Um, given the additional story, um, as members have quite rightly pointed out, you would add an additional two stories to that. So the minimum separation distance that we would look to achieve in this instance is 23 metres. Um, so the distance is exceeded not by millimetres, but, uh, which some one councillor referred to, but it, it's actually by two metres. Um, so we haven't ignored our guidance um, in terms of separation distances, and we, we, we have had regard to them. Um, so... Uh, hopefully that clarifies that for members. Okay, thanks for that. Brian, you have a question? Yes, um, thanks, Chair. I think Matthew may have partly um, answered it, but uh, I believe the petitioner, um, Mary, was arguing that if this application goes ahead, that the bedroom at number five would be, I think as she put it, uninhabitable. Am I not right in thinking that the, the original application was for four apartments? We're now talking about three apartments and that the, um, the, the, the fourth apartment that would have been there has now been removed and as such there will no longer be an impact on five cable road. So I, I just need to be clear, is there a problem with overlooking the, the bedroom at number five or not, please? Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Brian. Matthew? Yep, I'm just going to put the plan back up, um, so hopefully members can see that. Um, so, originally when the scheme was proposed, um, this, this ridge here continued across um, to provide um, the, 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 fourth, the fourth apartment. Um, and I, as I just said, the, the window on the gable elevation of, um, of number five is, is here. And it, it, it doesn't directly relate to a habitable room. It relates to the stairwell up to the loft conversion, um, with the principal windows being um, uh, roof lights in the rear elevation. But but it, it does provide for additional uh, for additional light into those bedrooms, particularly when the uh, when the door is open. So um, that that's why we considered that there would be some impact on that window, albeit that it's very small and it, it's not a habitable room. Um, so we asked the, the agents to drop it down um, back to, to two-storey here. So this, this part of the scheme is, is, is now two-storey. And um, when I go back to this plan, so this part here is all two-storey. Uh, this part here is the new stairwell. And then the, the new apartments um, are, are over here. So we have had regard to that window, um, and but... But uh, as I say, um, we, we think the scheme is is, um, is acceptable in terms of our, our guidance on separation distances. Okay, thanks for that. Um, yeah, I, I was just going to say, I, I, like Steve, I, I went up yesterday to, uh, to have a look, and I, I can see how uh, Block A, um, the one overlooking the car park, um, relates to its, uh, you know, immediate setting um it is facing a car park um there are three-story buildings uh the other side of the the car park it seems to have a lot more room a lot more space if you like to breathe um and it's easy to see why the inspector you know uh, granted it uh, permission um i agree with andrew gardner that you know it's, it's not the same setting uh for block b it, it does need to be looked at completely differently i, I was struck by the narrowness of the roads and the interface between the uh, block B and the uh, and the older houses in Cable Street, um, the separation distances, uh, as as we've heard, um, are are met. Um, but notwithstanding that, if one looks, you know, down Cable Street, so we have the older uh, two-storey buildings, uh, and at the bottom we currently have two-storey um, modern building. Now, I can't shake the feeling that it will become overly dominant in the street scene um, if, a, if a further uh, story is um, is is added um, uh, to that. Um, as as Steve says, you know we are looking as far as possible to try and get accommodation 
off the green belt and, and in the primary residential area. Um, however, you know, we're only talking about three three units uh, in this case, and I think there would be perceptible harm um, to the um, to, to the street scene if there was a third story uh, in my mind. Kathy, you, you've um, you, you suggested in the in the chat that you may have some words for us to consider. Yes, Chair. Do you want me to read them out now? Yes, please. Right. Uh, reasons for refusal, APP 1901712, Grosvenor Court, Grosvenor Road, Hoylake. The, proposal, the proposed development would be of a scale that would not be consistent with the prevailing height and form of neighbouring properties and the street scene at this part of Grosvenor Road and Cable Road, where the overall and predominant character of properties is two-storey. The additional story proposed would not relate well to its immediate surroundings with regard to the proposed form of development, which by reasons of the width of Grosvenor Road and the relationship of residential properties at the junction of Cable Road with Grosvenor Road would result in an overbearing and unacceptably dominant impact that would result in a, a detrimental change in the character of this part of Grosvenor Road. Furthermore, Having regard to the close proximity of numbers three and five Cable Road with the development proposed, the additional story would result in an unsatisfactory and undesirable impact on the amenities of the occupiers of those properties. The proposed development would therefore be contrary to policy HS4 criteria for new housing development and supplementary planning document two designing for self-contained flat developments and conversions and the provisions of paragraph 118E of the National Planning Policy Framework. Thanks for that, Cathy. Is, is there a second there? Bruce, <coughs> you're dropping yes, in. Yeah. Happy to second that. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Uh, any further comments from members on, on what's been moved? I'm just... Um, I'm just looking at my copy of the National Planning Policy Framework, which I have with me as, at all times, and reference was made there to paragraph 118, which I've, uh, uh, section A, which I've, I've looked up. Um, and I guess this is going to become more topical um, over time. It, it actually says, just so members are, are aware, um, that, that our decision should support opportunities to use the airspace above existing residential and commercial premises for new homes. In particular, they should allow upward extensions where the development will be consistent with the prevailing height and form of neighbouring neighboring properties and the overall street scene. So that's, that's what it says, and I, I think I'm in agreement with, with, with Cathy that in this case it wouldn't. And that paragraph doesn't actually go away. Uh, even when we move to more permitted developments. Um, Steve Hayes, you want to comment on the... Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm minded to agree with you. I uh, took the opportunity to uh, do a quick Photoshop cut and paste and stick the middle, or well, the second on top of where the third would be, and it certainly did look out of, uh, out of place on the photograph I took to be able to do that. So I, I must admit I'm minded to support the... Um, what, what, what Cathy's proposed. Okay, thanks for that. Any other members wish to comment, or shall we move to voting? Chairman okay. McIneil here. I've got the voting list. Shall I? Um, well, I'll, I'll I'll just um I'll I'll just advise members of the voting on, and then we can vote. Okay, okay. so voting will be for, against, or abstaining on the motion. The solicitor will call your name. Please turn on your camera and microphone and say who you are before voting. Members should only cast a vote if they have heard the planning officer's presentation and the debate in relation to this matter in full and have not had any technical difficulties during this item. In the event that you have had problems here in the discussion, you should not vote and indicate not voting when called. So we're going to vote on the reasons for refusal given by Cathy Hodgson and seconded by Bruce Berry. Um, so if I can hang, hand over to the solicitor, he will conduct the vote. Thanks, Matthew. Matthew. Thank you, Chairman. So, um, Councillor Bruce Berry, please. Uh, Councillor Bruce Berry, voting for. So, for refusal, yeah. Yes, yeah, for, 
Yes, for refusal. Yes. Uh, Councillor uh, Corkill, please. Uh, Councillor Andy Corkill voting in favour of refusal. <laughs> Councillor George Davis. Um, against. Against refusal. Thank you. Councillor Steve Folks. Against. Councillor Steve Folks. Councillor Samantha Frost. Voting against. Against refusal, thank you. Councillor Steve Hayes. Councillor Steve Hayes voting for. Councillor Cathy Hodson. Voting for. Councillor Mary Jordan. Councillor Mary Jordan voting for. Councillor Stuart Kelly. Uh, Councillor Stuart Kelly voting for refusal. Councillor Brian Kenny. Councillor Brian Kenny voting against the motion. Thank okay. you. Councillor Ian Lewis. Councillor Ian Lewis voting for refusal. Councillor Paul Stewart. Councillor Paul Stewart, uh, I'm voting against. Councillor Stuart Whittingham. Councillor Stuart Whittingham voting against refusal. Councillor Irene Williams. Councillor Irene Williams voting against the motion. Thanks for that, members. I'm advised that the vote is 7-7, uh, seven, seven is tied. I'm casting the chair's casting vote uh, for refusal. That application has been refused. Um, only a one item agenda then for us tonight, so um, I'll declare the, the meeting closed and uh, end the webcast. <laughs>